The pathway of core stability is our reward for breakthrough. It is what helps us to stay present and live life with an open heart. It gives us a sense of peace and well-being and a feeling that you're safe and supported by the universe. So let's talk about how we reap our harvest. So the pathway of core stability runs from our radiance down to our purpose in the activation sequence. It's the final pathway of the activation sequence. And it really is this coming back into our physical body and reclaiming our innocence. And I said that it is our reward for breakthrough. However, seeking that reward is exactly what keeps us from it. It's the classic advice given by the Buddha, that it's our seeking that distracts us from reaping all the work that we're doing. It keeps us distracted. There are no shortcuts here. We don't get to seek knowledge and all of a sudden end up in this core stability. What we need to do is focus on our day-to-day -day life. We focus on the conscious sphere. So if you remember, the sphere of life's work and evolution are programming partners. And they are the first two spheres of the activation sequence. So these are under our conscious control. We get to choose what we're doing when those shadows show up in our life. And as a consequence from the choices we make here, it affects our frequency in the unconscious sphere. And again, these two are also programming partners. However, we don't have direct control. These are the unconscious forces that are driving our life. And so the only way to reap this reward is to allow this to bubble up in time. There's nothing that you can do. And we hate that as humans because it feels out of our control. But the only thing you need, and this is a word that I brought up last time, and I'll bring it up again, is patience. Give yourself time, give yourself space. And in that time and with that space, you will feel the anchor of your core stability start to take hold. And the activation sequence is designed to take us back, to take us back to a time before we were living in our conditioning, before we thought that there was something wrong with ourselves, that we had to be different so that other people would accept us. Our society is designed to break us so that we fit in. However, that's robbing us of our ability to activate our true genius, our true purpose in the world. An important thing with the activation sequence is to know that it doesn't change your world. It doesn't change your circumstances. So often we do this work thinking that we're going to get a reward, thinking that the, the outer circumstances in our life are going to change. And in a sense, that's true in time, that's true, but that's not the design of the activation sequence. It is designed to change you, to change your internal response to the things that happen outside of you. And the secret though, is that when we change ourselves, our circumstances change. And this is the root of a word that I know, uh oh, I lost my marker here, everybody, loves to talk about in this space and that is to manifest or manifestation if you've ever read the book the secret right or done anything on manifestation it's all about changing internally and when you do that the things outside of you start to shift and start to change however a lot of times people focus only on that external thing and then manifestation doesn't work. The outer circumstances won't change without an inner turning. So if you'll allow me now, I wanna talk quickly about the start or origin of this idea because it wasn't always this way. We didn't always think that we could change our external circumstances. 
in a time before really before the Jewish religion took hold, we didn't think that we could change anything. It was all up to the gods. It was all up to circumstance. And then the Jewish God, Yahweh, comes and Yahweh essentially was the first time ever that we could participate in the journey. We could change our circumstances by believing in love that we are a part of reality and our interaction with God is what shapes our reality. And that brings us to four types of knowing. And I learned this from a guy named John Verveke who has an amazing YouTube channel that I highly recommend that you check out. And it's important because this is like a life changing or story changing or society changing, culture changing moment in knowing that we have an opportunity to take part instead of to be told what to do. So there are four types of knowing. The first type is what's called propositional knowing. And this is facts. Right, what you might consider knowledge. This is all up in our brain. Then we go to what's called procedural knowing. And this is knowing how to do things in the world. It's understanding skills, sequences. Then we move on now, we've got perspectival knowing. And perspectival, Perspectival knowing is the knowing of an expert. So it's seeing the world from a specific point of view, from a specific perspective, and then trying to engage or interact with the world from that one perspective. And then finally we get to the biggie which is what's called participatory knowing. And participatory knowing is exactly what I was talking about. It's the idea of an agent arena relationship. So what that means is there's an agent, there's you, and then there's an arena, there's your circumstances, what's happening around you in the world. And with participatory knowing, unlike perspectival knowing, we're able to shift our perspective as the world shifts around us. And we trust in those shifts because we begin to believe in something higher. We begin to believe in an organizing principle. And that thing that we believe in is what's called agopic love or agape. And it's an understanding that there is something in this world that, that wants us to live our genius, that wants us to fulfill our true potential. The Greeks had three, or, or possibly more, but three that I know of types of love. And the first one is what's called eros. And eros, eros is um, a passionate love. It is lustful and physical and it's me oriented. So this is typically like associated with romanticism or romantic love. Um, and again, lust and me oriented. Then we move on to philia. And philia is we oriented and it's a love that's based on brotherhood and sisterhood. It's based on shared interests in, and it oftentimes is based around a friendship. Then we get to the third type of love, the kind of love actually already written up here that I just spoke about agopic love. And agape is an unconditional love. 
and it is not at all concerned with self. And this is what's often thought about when we think of the love in the Jewish tradition of God and his people. But if we extrapolate that out from the Jewish tradition, because it also goes into Christianity, it also goes into basically every spiritual system out there is this knowing, this understanding that there is some sort of benevolent force in the world. And that agape is what allows us to come into trust, to settle back into our innocence and into our physical body. So all that to say that the activation sequence is here to reconnect us to that agapic love and to give us a sense of participatory knowing, a sense that it is our interacting with the world in new and novel ways, our staying open that allows us to deal with challenges in the way that serves our highest good and therefore serves the world. The challenges are always going to come. They're a part of evolution, literally. Challenges are what drives our growth. It's what leads to mutation. It's what causes changes within ourselves and within species. So we've got to learn to embrace change or we will be stuck in the cycle that we are in right now forever. And it's so hard to do that because change feels unstable. But what is the hidden secret there is fully falling into that instability and trusting in it is the thing that creates that core stability. Change leads to core stability. And until we're able to believe that, instead of trying to control every circumstance in our life, we're going to end up stuck. We're going to be locked in at whatever frequency we are. Challenges, when they come, lead to three things. So the first is what we talked about in our last pathway. When you are able to see a challenge and respond to it from a high frequency with a good attitude, we get a breakthrough. If we come into challenge we can lead ourselves into a breakdown. We get frustrated, we shut ourselves off in our room or we take it out on somebody else. And the third is a break up. And that could mean the ending of a relationship to another or an ending of a relationship to yourself. We just give up and we don't believe that we're ever going to be able to be who we truly want to be. So many people walk around in this world with their head down just accepting what is because they've given up. They've had this breakup moment. One too many challenges has come through and because they're fighting change, they never find their core stability. And they just think life is what it is and their heads down and they have this Eeyore attitude. To thrive is to stay in a good attitude. How do we stay in that good attitude? It's easy to say, right? Adversity comes, oh, I'm just gonna be happy and chipper. But there's a difference between knowing and embodying that truth. And the way that we get to the other side is to embrace the shadow. Every shadow contains a gift. And the moment that you see that is the moment that you can turn towards that shirt shadow, turn towards that challenge and start the process of mining the learning, mining what we're supposed to take forward from that challenge with us. And when you're successful in that, every challenge actually makes you stronger. It makes you realize that you can handle the next challenge that's coming and it helps you to stay more centered versus being in the victim mentality and being angry and pessimistic because something came up in your life that was unexpected. There's also a huge physical component to the pathway of core stability. And 
Basically what I mean by that is it's a literal feeling of like ease and peace in your body. I've said this before and it really is the thing that has made me personally stick with the gene keys. I started to loosen up. I started to hold my head higher for my shoulders to come down, to be able to move my hips again. I was so broken. My back hurt so badly. I woke up every morning and had to do 20 minutes of mobility work just so that I wasn't walking around hunched over and crumpled up until I worked my way through the activation sequence. And it wasn't like a, aha, everything's different. My back loosened up immediately, but it has been noticeable enough that I choose to stay on the course. And I was really connected to my body from a physical place. However, what I didn't have was an emotional connection to my body. Our emotions affect how we carry ourselves, right? When we're sad, our head goes down. We have these rounded out shoulders. And I just didn't believe I saw the physical totally separate from the emotional. When I started to deal with the spiritual wounds that I had. When I started to realize I was connected to everyone else, then my spine started to change. It's like this piece of paper, right? Imagine this is my body and I'm born here and this is my pathway to get towards my Dharma, what I'm meant to do, my life's purpose, what my soul is here for this time around. And when our body is open, we have access to this path and it's still gonna be a windy road and it's still tricky to navigate. However, when our spirit gets crumpled, when we let the world beat us down, this is what happens to our body. And we have this sense of our Dharma and obviously we know that we were born, but we can't see all the twists and turns. We can't know what our path is. And the activation sequence begins to uncrumple the paper so that we can start to see our path again. And I realize now that was the only thing that was going to get my attention. I wouldn't pay attention to any other signal. It's like that was my soul saying that if you don't listen, Everything that you want to do with your physical body is going to feel terrible. And I'm working on a video now where I talk about chronic health conditions. And I think that most chronic health conditions, 90% plus, are a circumstance or an outcome of our soul trying to get our attention. We know we're not living our true path and yet we continue to ignore it. And so our soul does whatever it can to get us to pay attention. And even still, we choose to ignore it and just address the symptoms, right? For me, it was my back and I did anything and everything. I worked with chiropractors, physical therapists, energy healers. Um, I got PRP injections. I thought about having surgery. Thank goodness I didn't. All to address the pain but I refused to look at what caused the pain in the first place. With enough time, that internal pain becomes an external manifestation. And until we're willing to look at that internal pain, that external manifestation is going to stay present. And that's why sometimes it feels like we're taking steps forward. You know, maybe it's gut health issues, maybe it's skin issues. They clear up because we treat the symptoms, but then always they come back because we didn't address the underlying cause. And core stability is us returning to our ability to actually heed our own wisdom and the messages from our body. We actually begin to listen again. We began to discern. 
which is the 13th gene key, right? We hear, we hear the pain, but we don't listen to it. And this is how listening means actually making the changes at the base level, actually making the changes that our soul is screaming for. Discernment is listening internally instead of getting lost in the noise of the world because the world is stuck in the shadow frequency right now. Our collective frequency is a shadow frequency. So you must learn to discern for yourself. It's about aligning. Core stability is about aligning to what God wants for you and letting go of your egoic demands. Instead of pushing your life in the direction you want it to go, you learn to flow with life in the direction that God is trying to take you. And it's important to know that stability does not equal rigidity. If you are rigid, you're not going to be able to engage in that participatory knowing, that adjusting to what's happening in the world around you. We need to be stable. That means balanced. Think of a surfer. As a wave changes, we're adjusting our balance, our weights in our front foot, in our back foot, in our toes, in our heels, so that we play with the energy of the universe. Like a willow tree, you bend to the will of the agopic love that is showing up in your life. And when we are anchored in our purpose, remember, this anchor, this pathway of core stability connects our radiance to our purpose. And when you're anchored in your purpose, we learn to respond instead of to react. Reacting means doing the first thing that comes to mind. Reacting means being in a victim mentality, thinking this thing happened to me, therefore I must do this. Responding comes from a place that is much deeper than your brain. It comes from your heart. It comes from your belly. We learn with core stability what the Taoists call the way or the middle path. And this is an idea where there is always a balance in everything that we do. We can eat too much food or not enough food. We can work too hard or not hard enough. We need to honor our ancestors and at the same time, learn to engage with technology and all the beautiful gifts that we've, we've gotten in the past couple hundred years. We have to train ourselves in adversity. Stoicism is a great school of philosophy, a great school of thought to do that, and at the same time, be sitting in bliss. We accept our current reality and strive for growth. We find the middle way, we find the balance. And because core stability connects our radiance and our purpose, it is what allows our inner light to come out. So your radiance is your inner light. And it's literally stored inside of your DNA. I talked about this idea in my last video. You should check it out. There's some thought that's happening right now that our body might actually move light internally to itself. So this might not be all that far out there. But our radiance connects down to our purpose. And it's our living in our purpose, our trusting in the world and the circumstances that allows our radiance to shine through. So although in our um, golden path, this pathway goes from radiance to purpose, in reality, it also goes from purpose to radiance. These things go in all different directions. And these two spheres are the unconscious forces that bring about a chance for you to fulfill your dharma. And actually coming out of the sphere of purpose, technically on a profile, it goes up, but just for the sake of space, 
out of the sphere of purpose and connecting us to the sphere of attraction, this is the pathway of Dharma. And it is our living, our Dharma that allows us to attract in the people, the places, the situations that allow our genius to emerge. We've got to learn to adjust our balance, to adjust our posture and work with the forces of nature. You called them in. Remember, these are unconscious. So you may not know that you called them in, but you called them in. And so you have to start to believe that those circumstances are here to bring you home. They are a loving energy that is designed to return you to oneness, to return you to God, to return you to a way of living in the world that feels good. So many of us have forgotten because we think we need to act a certain way. We think we need to do a certain thing. We need to make a certain amount of money. We need to be a certain way in this culture, in this society so that other people like us and don't judge us. And all of that keeps us from our dharma. It keeps us from our purpose. And it keeps us from the gift, the brilliance of our core stability. Nature is far more powerful than you are. I have a quick story to highlight that. I'm a big surfer. And at the beach that I go to, there are what are called groins, which are like these big, some of them are rock, some of them are metal, but they go from the beach out into the water and it's designed to stop beach erosion. And sometimes when the waves get big, the drift down the beach is really fast. So like if you're staring at me out in the water on the beach in like two minutes, I might be 300 yards down the beach because the water's drifting. And one time I was surfing and I caught a wave in and I looked over and I was inside of where that groin is and it was just slightly above water and I was drifting towards it really quickly. And in that moment, I had two choices. There was a wave coming and I could have taken that wave and rode it into shore and I would have missed that groin. Instead, I tried to fight against it. I tried to paddle against the current and back out so that I could get into deeper water to get over that groin. And guess what happened? A wave come that, I, that came that I wasn't expecting, knocked me further forward, and I slammed into that groin. Thank God my head didn't hit, but I did put a giant hole in my surfboard. And it's because I was trying to fight against nature. Nature always wins. We can either work with her or we're going to become broken and exhausted. And so many people, myself included for a long time, and honestly, I feel like I'm just coming out of it, are living in that exhaustion and just taking it as that's how life is. But if you can focus on bringing your awareness down into your belly, down into what Richard Rudd calls the one point, it's right behind your belly button, right behind your navel, it's what connects you to the universe, to the one, that is where we find our core stability. You're not going to be able to find this in our mind. We need to be in our navel, not in our head. There is no thinking your way to core stability. There's no understanding your way there. There's no amount of knowledge that's going to get you there. Right? Remember, that's our first type of knowing. But what we need is participatory knowing. That's propositional knowing in our head. This is participatory knowing in our belly. And to get connected to that, I cannot overestimate or over, is that the right word? Whatever. I cannot tell you how important meditation is. It's not something that I talk about often on this channel, but I've had a meditation practice uh, since 2014, so we're 10 years in now, and pretty deep meditation practice since about 2018. At some point, I'll, do a, I'll probably do a video on how I practice. Uh, it's changed a lot over the years, and what I do 
probably isn't right for someone that's brand new getting into meditation. We need the banks on the river first before we start flowing in the river. But I will tell you one resource that I actually found just a couple years ago that I really love for learning meditation is what's called Ziva meditation. So if you give that a quick Google, um, it's a mantra based meditation that I have found takes people that are newer to meditation really deep, really quickly. And until we can get out of our mind, until we can quiet that voice, it's gonna be really hard to live from our belly. Always remember, you are not a victim. We need to face our challenges head on in order for our inner light to shine through. If we run from them, that inner light stays tucked inside. What draws the inner light out is the challenge itself. Your genius emerges through your core stability. Your true genius, your true higher purpose cannot come until you feel safe and at home and fully embodied in yourself. You're here to do something powerful. However, you have to maintain the energy and attitude to get it done. We need to maintain high energy. We need to maintain a positive attitude. And that doesn't mean that you're not gonna slip into a tough time from time to time. However, what you'll find is the longer you walk the golden path, the more that you remember, even in that misery, even in that tough time, that there's another part of you that knows different. And more and more, we begin to identify with that part. So I'm not telling you to ignore those feelings. Those are all part of the process. What you'll find, though, is that there's more there. There's something else there. And it's our core stability that keeps us there. And it's a beautiful thing. All right, I wanna finish this up with two things. First, we are doing a, another, what I'm calling a wisdom call. So this is for the community, for the, the people, the subscribers who watch this channel. I'm doing a call on Google Meet so that we can engage with one another. And my job is to sit there and to listen and to try and share some wisdom based on the things that, that you have questions about or based on the things that are current circumstances in your life. And you can bring questions about specific gene keys, about the pathways, about the lines, about a circumstance in your life. And I'm gonna do my best to facilitate a conversation that furthers your understanding. Remember, I'm not here to give you answers. You have all the answers. I'm just here to ask you questions so that you can get to that answer for yourself. And I'll also call on other people. There's a lot of people in this community that have experience in this world for even longer than I do. And they have wisdom that they can share and different life experience that they can share. So I'd love for you to be on that call. I'll link it in the description. It is next week. So right now it is July 1st. I can't remember the date exactly, which is a bummer, but I wanna say it's like the 11th or 12th, somewhere in that zone. And we're doing it at, I believe, 1 p.m. Eastern. But I'll put the link to sign up for that call in the description so that you can be there if you can get there. The other thing that I quickly wanna to touch on is at the beginning of June, I did a video talking about a 30-day challenge. And there was 10 different things that I committed to doing every single day. And I want to talk to you about the outcome of that challenge because I did not stick with it. For the first 15 days, I was so focused and so dedicated and I was using this um, app and actually website. It's great. It's called Notion. If you're looking for a system of organization, it's also I've started working with a couple people uh, who have reached out to me on Gene Keys related stuff. And I'm also using Notion as a way of like mapping out everything that we're talking about. It's really cool. Anyway, one of the things you can do on Notion is have a habit tracker. In my first 15 days, all of those boxes were checked. And the reason that I decided to do this challenge, it came about from what's called the Jaguar's journey. 
uh, which is a Gene Keys mini course that's tied to the DreamArc, which is actually, I believe, the next retreat that Gene Keys HQ is doing is a DreamArc retreat. And the very first animal that I had uh, was a python, which represented commitment. And so I thought in that moment, I am going to commit to doing this thing. However, the last animal, or maybe second to last animal that I had, was all about self-compassion and self-love. And that came about right at about day 15. And what I realized is that I was sacrificing self-love in order to do these things. I was doing stuff that I didn't want to be doing, uh, not in a way that, you know, there's times where we need to just buckle down and do things. And we need to be disciplined and to stay focused. I was being disciplined and focused and yet something fell off and I followed my intuition and I stopped. And so I hope that this is just a lesson for somebody watching right now where you don't need to feel like a failure if you decide to change a commitment. If you renegotiate an agreement with yourself or somebody else, there isn't a failure so long as you learn something from the process. Also, it shows you I'm not perfect. Uh, I am so flawed and I am on this journey with each of you. Anyway, I thought it was important for you to know how that went and to give yourself some grace and some self-love. All right, that's the last pathway of core stability. And then we go into the, I'm gonna, just gonna go in order now. So the first pathway of, or excuse me, the last pathway of the activation sequence is core stability. Now we're gonna go into the Venus sequence and hit our first pathway, which I mentioned in this video, is the pathway of Dharma. Also, I'm working in the background. My big, I just am so drawn to this idea right now. And, and I really think that it could change the world is, using a spiritual connection, a connection to our emotions, instead of just addressing physical issues, physical ailments, is how we can end the chronic disease epidemic that is happening right now. And so I'm really working on an in-depth video that I think could be life-changing for a lot of people. And I want to facilitate that. I haven't felt this way in a long time. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time.